The 456th edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Bet365. Bet365 is offering new users a $1,000 risk-free bet. Sign up today at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet365. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use promo code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Howdy ho, DeGenerinos. Welcome to episode 456 of the MMA Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. This episode is dedicated to Bellator. Rest in peace, Bellator. Pour out a little liquor for Bellator. Oh, what? No, Bellator's not dead, you say? PFL has, uh, has uh, bought them, and they're going to run them as a separate entity. But what I say to that is rest in peace, Bellator. You know, rest thank in you. peace, we'll, we'll Bellator talk about in, 11, in 11 months. Rest in peace, yes. Bellator. <laughs> yes. Thank you for coming to the show. I'm your, one of your hosts, Jeff Chalks Fox. This is a PFL episode. Good timing because PFL is in the news um, with their acquisition of Bellator. And they just so happen to have their world championships going on this coming weekend. So this coming Friday to be exact. So we are going to break down the prelims today and probably talk off the top a little bit about the whole PFL Bellator thing. But um, we pretty much covered it last episode. My co-host predicted what was going to happen pretty much predicted what was going to happen. And it did come true. Um, he has requested though, that we talk extensively about it off the top. He said at least <laughs> half hour or so of it. So we are going to do that. He's wearing a K on his hat in honor of my hometown. It's the one and only Daniel gumbo. Vreeland is no, gumbo. That- a Thanksgiving thing in your, in your neck of the woods or not in my old, in my old neck of the woods. It was okay. Um, I wasn't sure maybe, if it was in maybe not specifically Thanksgiving, but like you know, we no, have it. Around. I know, just in general. Yeah, yeah just a, it's just a general thing. Yep. Um, K, by the way, uh, got really into the Korean baseball league when we didn't have yep. MLB. This is from the Korean baseball league. The Kiwam Heroes uh, was the the team I pseudo adopted in that time. So people uh, were desperate. They were desperate yeah. for things to gamble on. And yes, when, uh, no, it wasn't even just gambling. I just yeah. needed to see some baseball or some sports yep. period. So like that was on it, you know, like three 30 in the morning. I was like, yeah, yep. you got me. Uh, Why not, I became right? a big, uh, ha Seong Kim came from the <laughs> Kiwam heroes. Uh, so I became a big ha Seong Kim fan. Uh, and yeah. Oh, so, uh, what, what were we talking about? We we're talking about Bellator. You don't want to talk about Bellator. I, I, I don't, you don't, I don't. It's <laughs> terrible. It's not fun to talk about. And, you know, like any acquisition, and I'll just say this real briefly, like any acquisition of a other MMA organization, and we've seen a hundred of them, we've seen strike force, we've seen WEC, we've seen, you know, like smaller ones get bought out every single time they buy one where they're like, we're going to run it as a separate entity. I think because they think they're going to get like double the distribution rights. And then they realize bundling their distribution makes way more sense. And they're going to get better money that way. And then once they're bundled, they're like, well, why is this a second entity? Why, why are we trying to, to hold up the, the value of two brands when we can have one mega brand and like, give it a year. That's what PFL will be doing. They're like, why are we propping up this thing that everybody was already laughing at? Um, because that, I mean, that's right. Like that's mostly what we were doing with Bellator. We're like, it seems like it's on its last leg. It doesn't seem healthy. And then they're like, Oh, well, we're going to own it and we're going to do less shows. And it's like, that doesn't make it look more healthy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, you you said any MMA acquisition, I, I would say business in general, they always claim nothing's going to change. No one's getting laid off. We're going to run everything separately. And then immediately people get laid off and everything gets streamlined. So yeah, it, they made this more as Gumby takes a chug out of his piss jug. Uh, they make this way more um, complicated than it had to be. I think with the announcement, like even I'm confused, like what, what are you doing? They're having what? like, we're having champions leagues and we're having like, we're going to keep it separate, but then some of the guys are going to be in the tournament. Like, it's just like, you're making it difficult. Like put it yeah, all well, together. Like, the- like Gumby said, and let's go. Well, part of the announcement too, that I forget that PFL already has like seven like subsidiaries, right? Yes, yeah, so like, yeah. Oh, well, you know, it's kind of going to work just like PFL Europe. And I'm like, I'll be honest. I forgot that existed. Uh, <laughs> They're large... running next week. I think maybe, yeah, maybe we'll yeah. have to and, cover it next week. Yeah. But it's largely because they don't have it on TV because they tried to bundle the distribution in a different way. And it wound up not being available to American fans. So like, even if we wanted to get behind your like European concept where you like onload people into your big organization from smaller organizations, like 
even if we wanted to get behind that, you don't give us a chance to see it. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a freaking nightmare. Um, and I guarantee Bellator just goes to the wayside. Yeah. Cause well, if you're a top fighter, like Apache mix or something like that, why would you want to do, do these one-off fights instead of fighting for a million bucks uh, in the PFL? Like what, uh, unless you're getting paid a half a million per fight and you fight twice a year, then why would you not want to fight in the in the tournament, right? Well, and especially if there's only eight of them in a year, right? Like if you, you're right, let, let's, right. Say, let's say you're patchy mix and you get on the February card, right? That's your first card of the year. You get on the February card. There might not be a March card, first of all, because there's, you know, there's only eight of them on the year. You, you might not be healthy by April, May. They might skip June. So now you're working in July. You get like a little banged up, missed July 4th date. Now we're talking about like you can't fight more than twice a year. It's just like it limits your possibilities of fighting being on that schedule. And we've even seen that with the PFL model period, right? Their regular season model where they shut down the amount of events they have. If somebody gets injured, it basically ruins their chance to make the playoffs because they like that's the time heavyweights fight. And if you're not ready when the time heavyweights fight, then yeah. you miss your heavyweight fight. Um, yeah. So that, that seems like nonsense. And then adding this is just, yeah, it's not going to end well. And then the other thing I don't like is the automatic uh, comparing yourself to the UFC and saying you're as big as the UFC and Dana White's worried. Uh, just don't talk about the competition. How about, how about you worry about you stay in your own lane. You worry about yourself and uh, not talk about the UFC because that just makes you look like you're below the UFC and you're, right. and and, you're trying and, to be them. So just, and just they, be you. They found like the worst possible metric they could to try to argue <laughs> that they're already even. They're like 30% of ranked fighters in the divisions that we have on an independent ranking system, which I'm sure is like either tapology or like fight matrix, yeah. which, you know, like run on, you know, they, they run on some sort of algorithm or like, I think tapology sometimes are fan voting. <laughs> like they're, uh, but they're like, we have 30% in the divisions that we have. So like, Okay, cool. But like that also means you probably have all the women's featherweights with the exception of like one or two Invicta. That's propping up the number right there. And also then you're disqualifying all the divisions you don't have. Like it's so stupid. Like you're just you're desperately trying to find a metric to make it sound like you're there. And like you know what the metric is? Ask somebody on the street how many MMA fighters they can name and how many of them are from Bellator or PFL. And if you yeah. it, uh, you take any, you know, like you know, tangential fan. Let's use my older brother as an example. He kind of watches MMA, but not really. If I walked up to him and I said, name 10 MMA fighters, either they would be retired UFC fighters or they would be current UFC fighters. None of them would be Bellator PFL ones. Yeah. Who would be number one? Just For him? as an aside. Yes. <laughs> um, as a casual I, fan. Who, who would if be I the tried to, If I tried to poke him and tell him he had to be active... He might say Francis Ngannou first, okay. Um, okay, just because he's like in the boxing news, um, yeah. and then he'll probably say something like CM Punk because he's a wrestler. I was gonna say he's because <laughs> I know he, I know he's into wrestling, so I was gonna say CM Punk for sure. Yeah, Bill CM Brock, Punk, CM Brock Lesnar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is just like when WWF bought WCW, so um, PFL is gonna make sure all their fighters crush the Bellator fighters, right? Just like Vince McMahon made sure all the WCW guys <laughs> lost, and then. And then uh, I guess they can't really do that in MMA, but still, uh, I like PFL. I, I hope they succeed. Um, stop comparing yourself to the UFC and, you know, don't run Bellator separate. Just maybe run different events and stuff. Sure. Um, or different style things. Sure. Or maybe if a fighter loses out of the tournament and then have like other, other, th other things for them to do that type of thing. But uh, yeah, we, we don't need Bellator. We it's do. not a respected brand. Gumby calls it Mickey Mouse. Or I call it a Mickey Mouse. Gumby agreed, possibly. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, uh, we do like PFL. We're gonna. I. I. Well, I like it. Do you like PFL? Yeah, I mostly like it. I, I like don't like the 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 fact that they're like a little bit rigid with their structure, and then they cherry pick who they actually want in the playoffs. Anyway, <laughs> then they somebody, aren't rigid. <laughs> somebody didn't fight really well. Um, they didn't like yeah. that somebody didn't try to go for blood against his best friend. Um, but like apart from that, yeah, and they're mostly fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's something different at least. So, which which I appreciate. All right, we will jump into uh, uh, PFL's got a big card this week, and it's almost like they're they're the one going out of business. But no, they're just going out of business for a few months uh, to end this season. So they got a big card uh, today. We've got the five prelim fights, um, but there is a championship fight on this card, and there's a bunch of um, names that, if you're listening to the show, you surely know at least a couple of the names that we're going to be breaking down on this card. And then tomorrow we will be doing the main card. It's a 
packed main card, lots of title fights, and then a uh, a couple of uh, feature fights um, with fighters they hoped would be in the championships, and, and they are not uh, because they they uh, slipped in a banana peel on the way to it. But before we get all to all of that, we're going to tell you about Bet365 because we are brought to you by Bet365. Bet365 is the world's favorite sports book trusted by over 88 million players worldwide. Prop size totals, live betting, Bet365 has you covered. And if you like boosts, you're going to love Bet365, like a 30% profit boost on your NFL same game parlay. Plus, they even have an early payout offer if your team goes up 17 points. Sign up today and choose from two bonus offers. You can't lose either way, but here we go. Either a thousand dollar no sweat bet or bet five dollars get 150 dollars in bonus bets just head to sports gambling podcast.com slash bet 365 that's sports gambling podcast.com slash bet 365 or use the sign up link in our show bio gumby do you have a bet 365 number that you like for any sport because you're the king of all sports um i mean i I don't know if this will come out before uh the game but i i do i do like the kings to bounce back tonight uh, the Kings Kings look pretty pretty bad on uh, on on Tuesday night, and I'm hoping that they rebound here on Wednesday. We're talking about the hardwood Kings, not these skating on ice Kings, correct? Correct. Yes, I, I'm not. Yeah, you know, I no, I I don't pick a I don't pick a hockey game unless I'm picking Bruins minus one and a half, which Ugh. you could take that Whoa. tonight too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Bruins are a wagon once again this year, as as the hockey gambling podcast guys like to say. They also like to shut out our podcast often, so. Hello, um, Hockey Game of the Popeyes podcast. Even if you don't like hockey, you should listen to it because they're, they're pretty unhinged, those boys. All right, um, who are they playing tonight? The Kings are playing... Who are they playing tonight, Gumby? Um, oh, the Pelicans, 8 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully we have this in your ears by then. Get in on that bet. Um, yeah, Pelicans are up and down, so I kind of like that bet as well. And if you have a, a, a gambling problem, you can call 1-800-GAMBLER also. All right, all right. Let's get into the PFL World Championships, shall we? PFL 10. 2023, no, PFL 10 colon 2023 at PFL World Championship. It's not going down to Madison Square Gardens or the theater at Madison, Madison Square Gardens. It's in Washington, D.C. Uh, this year instead. Friday, November the 24th, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that is when the prelims start, and that's what we're covering today. And the prelims are on ESPN Plus if you're in the United States of America. I don't, I think they're on TSN here in Canada. I think um, that's what I'm going with at least. The Anthem in Washington, D.C. is where they are going down. Have you been in the Anthem, Gumby? I've been to Washington, D.C., but not to the Anthem. Yep. I've been around it. I haven't been into Washington, D.C., I don't think. Um, this is in a cage, sadly. They're still doing cage fights. Ray Cepho is the matchmaker. We got 12 bouts, and we're going to start off, like I said, today is the prelims, but like, there's some pretty decent fights on the prelims, and the main event is for a million dollars, so you don't get that very often on prelims. All right, start off with... Three five minute rounds at featherweight Jesse Stern versus Josh Blyden, America versus America. Um, we will tell you about Blyden first nine and two, one knockout, five submissions. This is his PFL debut. So, in three straight fights, however, he's not fought since March of 2021. Ring rust is a real thing, despite what Dominic Cruz says. UFC fighters only win 46% of the time when they're off more than a year. I, I assume this would translate to other promotions as well. Uh, Blyden has not lost a fight since November 2017, so that's a pretty good stretch there. Regional champion used to fight at lightweight, an inch of height, three inches of reach on Stern, plus 180. Stern is relentless. That, that's a good attribute to have. Determined and relentless, very good attributes to have in MMA. Uh, Stern is 15 to 6, one knockout, six submissions. He's been submitted four times, 0 2 in the PFL. However, he has won four straight fights. He's not lost a fight since August of 2021. He's got multiple regional championships on his mantle. Correct. Go to the store, sportsagamilypodcast.com slash store. Get our shirt. He's missed weight before. Used to fight down at Bantamweight. I think that's when he missed weight, if I remember correctly. He's five years younger than Blyden. Minus 225. Do you know about these gentlemen, or did you have to do some research? I had seen uh, I, I had seen Stern before, because he fought for Unified MMA, which is a, uh, a fight pass promotion. And I remember watching him and thinking that I didn't think too much of him. Uh, he, he fought this guy, last name Kazbikov. I'm trying to remember his first name. I think it was Vitaly. Um, but Kazbikov, who was like a seven in five dude, but people hyped up because he was Russian. Um, and he didn't look particularly good against them. Uh, my, my biggest issue is that Jesse Stern backs up a lot when he fights. Like he doesn't move forward. Uh, like, yeah, he, it seems like he's got no faith in what his hands can do. And like the couple of times I've seen him let go, his hands aren't terrible. Like for a guy of, you know, hits 
you know, fighting on the regional scene at Unified MMA and with a record like his, like his hands are all right. But like, he doesn't seem to have faith in it. He just keeps backing up, backing up, backing up. And I don't know if it was that he was scared of the takedown. Um, he got taken down a couple of times. He got his own takedowns. He wound up only really winning the fight because he had better cardio than the other guy. Like the other guy was like pooped at round and a half in. And then like he took over and won the second half of the fight. But like I, I left that fight thinking like he doesn't really impress me. And Blyden, on the other hand, who I didn't know about, I was like, oh, you know, 30, what was he, 37? 37, two years off. I was like, oh, you know, like this has got to be an easy pick, right? Go Stern. I went back and watched him. Blyden is actually a really sharp wrestler. Um, I, I was like really impressed with his takedowns, like both in the fact that he chains pieces together and he like locks his hands under the hip and he like resets his takedowns when they don't hit. Um, and in addition to that, like look at Blyden's wins. All of Blyden's wins for the most part are submissions, right? Submission, submission, submission. You look at almost all of Jesse Stern's losses, submission, submission, submission. And you can see why. Like he shot a late takedown in that uh, Kasbikov fight. And, like, almost stuck himself right into a guillotine. And I think if he does that against Blyden, especially because Blyden doesn't tire as much, I think Blyden could sub him. So uh, I'm going to go dog money right out the gate here. I'll, I'll take Blyden. So we're not going go stern, baba booey, baba booey. We're going Blyden instead. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> so so speaks Gumby. He says Blyden is the pick. Gumby just can't resist a dog, can you? Uh, there are a couple on this card, I guess. <laughs> 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 okay we'll see perhaps it's the next one let's find out we're moving down a weight class or down yeah one weight class yes correct three five minute rounds at bantam weight baba no not, not baba jenkins kai Wu from the united states of america versus phil karakapa from the united states of america as well more america on america violence Wu is the shadow that's a good nickname i appreciate that one he's seven and four one knockout two submissions he's been submitted twice this is his PFL debut. He's won in two over his last three. He did win his last fight, however. is a regional champion. Uh, used to fight at featherweight, so up weight class. 0-2 in Bellator. Three years younger than Kara Kappa, plus 230. I know his name for some reason. We haven't covered him, have we? Wu before? Maybe I just know him from Bellator. Yeah, di di different Kai Wu, I believe. Oh, there's another one? Really? Yeah, re remember? So I think in when we watched um, Road to the UFC, there was a... Kai Wen Lee okay. versus Kai Wu fight. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and this okay. is this is not that Kai Wu. No, this is the American Kai Wu. Um, all right. Kara Kappa. We've not spoke about him before. He is hit, man. We have. He's we have spoken about him. Oh, we have really? Oh, the contender series. Yes, we have. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> Wait, way back. Hitman back. versus Hitman versus the Shadow. Hitman should be stay in the shadow. So uh these these two guys, um, these two nicknames uh, connect well here. Uh, Kara Kappa is nine and three with two knockouts. He's been knocked out once, submitted once. This is his debut. Lost win, lost win, lost over his last five. He did get TKO'd in his last fight. He fought in the contender series as Gumby uh, alluded to. 0 and one there. Do you remember who he got beat by? Did he did he get beat or did he win? The, oh, he definitely fought Ricky Steele and it was a split decision. But I thought he won. He lost that fight. I had him at zero and one. Let me see here. Could topology be wrong? Does anyone even care? This listening, he says no. He lost. He lost. He lost. Yep. Ricky Steele. Neither right of them. Maybe, part, at least. <laughs> neither of them got a contract. So there you go. Um, he also has multiple regional championships on his mantle. Greg, get the shirt. Sports gambling podcast dot com slash store a lot of mantles for for santa to to come down the chimney uh underneath this year on this card uh he's an inch of height two inches reach on woo he's minus 300 i am done with uh my santa story go ahead i'm i'm gonna go with uh phil caracapa here i i think uh kai, kai woo just strikes me as the type of person who's not going to deal with the wrestling of phil caracapa well um caracapa is kind of a shorter stockier wrestling kind of type um, if you go back, you know, he's, I mean, I guess five, eight is not short at Bantam weight, but he just kind of has like a wrestler guy build. Um, and if you go back and you look at all the losses from Kai Wu, a lot of times it's just him being like outworked on the mat. Um, you know, like some of the older losses, like the, he fought Cass Bell. Remember when we had a Cass Bell pizza party? Um, oh well, yes. I remember <laughs> it was a great time. <laughs> Cass Bell pizza party was a great, he lost to Cass <laughs> Bell by ground and pound. And it was again, just a grinder getting at him. Um, and, and the reason why Phil Caracapa did not get a contract on contender series that time was because both him and Ricky Steele shot like a hundred takedowns in that fight. And like, he doesn't like that. Yeah. He just hated bleed. it. And, just bleed. And, and, and Caracapa was the only one who hit any, which, you know, made it close. You know, one judge gave him the scorecards, but like, it, he's a grinder. 
he's won a lot of fights grinding that way. I, I think Kai Wu has maybe got like a, a puncher's chance here, but you know, Karakapa should be able to stay away from those big punches and, and just kind of grind out a win here. So I like Phil Karakapa. Do I remember the Caspell pizza party? Who who could forget the Caspell pizza party? <laughs> the hardcores, remember? He beat the, he beat the other Scoggins, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't remember that. I just remember the pizza party part. It was fun. <laughs> it was a good time had by all. All right. Uh, featherweights, three, five minute rounds. These are a couple of names I was alluding to earlier that you may know. Bubba Jenkins. We, we really wanted. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's right. I forgot to mark. Okay. What's their records again? Is it one, one and one? One and one. Yeah. All right. Bubba Jenkins from the United States of America versus Chris Wade. Also from the U- United States of America. I'll tell you about Wade first, a Long Island killer. As I've said before, it's probably not something you want to uh, advertise. Actually, there w- wasn't there a Long Island killer that just got caught recently. I believe there was. Was that on Long, Long Island? Island? Yeah, I think so. Sounds, so, yeah, sounds real. <laughs> not a good nickname, bro. Someone already took your job on you. Um, anyhow, he's twenty three and ten. Two knockouts, six missions. Yes, uh, serial killers and killer nicknames, probably not the best thing. Anyhow, 23 and 10, two knockouts, six missions. He's never been finished in a fight. Were you aware of that? 33 fights in, he's never yeah. been stopped. That, I mean, that sounds right for like how yeah, tough does. he is. Like, I mean, yep. he, even in the UFC, he had a good run in the UFC. They, he was one of yeah. those ones that you were kind of surprised left. Yeah, exactly. He's a clay collared type guy. Um, Not clay collared. Who who gets beat up he's, more than Clay? Uh, Clay Collar gets beat. Clay up. Clay Collar is a good one. Yeah, he's gonna yeah. he's gonna get beat up. Uh, we'll talk about that in tomorrow's <laughs> episode. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Um, that's right. Uh, Wade never been finished. As I said, eleven and seven in PFL, so he's pretty success, successful in PFL. One and three over his last four. However, he used to fight at lightweight. I believe he made it to the lightweight finals one year. Am I correct in that, or was it just that, the semis? I think it was. The that finals. sounds right. Yeah, that right? sounds right. Yep, five and two in the UFC, so very good there. You, you, they should have kept him. Uh, regional champion, 2011 pro MMA debut, two inches taller than Jenkins, plus 125. Jenkins is the bad man. Plus, he, that's his nickname as well. Uh, 21 and seven, six knockouts, five submissions. He is not quite as durable as Wade. Knocked out four times, submitted twice. Seven and three in the PFL, two and one over his last three, five and two over his last seven. Got TKO'd in his last fight. Was a regional champion, eight and three in Bellator. He used to fight at lightweight as well. Wrestling world champion, junior world champion in wrestling, and a multiple time All American in college, uh, minus 155. They probably would prefer Jenkins would be fighting for the uh, championship here, but um, they put him on the on the prelims nonetheless. I mean, I think they'd rather both these guys be fighting for him because the, the finals of this tournament is on the prelims. We're going to talk about it in two fights from now. There you go. Um, and and I, I'm going to go with Jenkins mostly just because, like, in the first fight, Chris Wayne. Uh, was aware enough of the takedowns of Bubba Jenkins that he was like, you know, he could easily win a striking match and just stuff the takedowns of Bubba Jenkins. Then in the second fight, how it happened was like Jenkins was like, oh, I can't go in completely one dimensional and win a fight against a guy with takedown defense. So he sharpened up his striking a little bit and it, it allowed his grappling game to get going a little bit more than it did the first time. I don't know that that's reversible, right? Like, I don't, I don't think... You know, like I think in order for Chris Wade to stuff Bubba Jenkins' takedowns, he needs to only be focused on Bubba Jenkins' takedowns. And now Bubba has just got like a little bit more to his game. Um, and, and that's not a it's not a knock on Chris Wade. It's just like Bubba Jenkins' game when it comes to wrestling is elite. Like he, he was a world champion. So like I, I think now that he's got a little bit of hands behind him, he's trouble for anybody who can't knock him out. And I, I just don't see Chris Wade knocking him out. So uh, yeah, give me Bubba Jenkins here. Probably a... If if your if your book happens to offer props, uh, this one going the distance probably pretty safe. <laughs> yep, because as we said, Chris Wade does not get stopped. All right, Jenkins is the pick. You know what else is the pick? Underdog Fantasy is our pick. Uh, Gummy and I pump out Underdog Fantasy articles every night on the website sportsgamblingpodcast.com, and now we're going to tell you how great Underdog Fantasy is. Underdog Fantasy has a way to play alongside your favorite fantasy players all season long. NFL, NBA, NHL, college basketball, and college football. Simply. MMA. Don't forget MMA, folks. Simply pick higher or lower on your favorite players' fantasy stats and cash in. Gummy, do you have a pick for today? You didn't, did an article for tonight or maybe for your Thanksgiving football tomorrow. What would you like to pick? I'll, I'll go with uh, in the 430 game on Thanksgiving. I will take the higher than on Jake Ferguson's receiving yards. Uh, right now I'm seeing it at only 35 and a half. He's going to easily get 35 and a half receiving yards. So, yeah, give me the higher than on that. I also like it. You can't double down on a single player, but it's seven and a half, seven point six five fantasy points for him. He should crush that as well. I don't even know who he plays for. 
You go ahead and take Detroit. a guess at who, he, who do Detroit, you think he plays the D- for? Detroit Lions. Would what I be talking about it? Would I be talking oh, about Dallas it Cowboys? Lions? Dallas Cowboys, of course. <laughs> Duh. Watch along. Watch the Cowboys. Make your picks and maybe make a little cash over on Underdog's mobile app or website on underdogfantasy.com. And when you sign up with the promo code SGPN, Underdog will double your first deposit of up to 100 bucks. It's Underdog Fantasy promo code SGPN. And last but not least, Hall of Fame Bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NFL season with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NFL, NBA, MLB, and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea in the Hall of Fame Bets revolutionary app. Parlay optimizer or tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as an expected probability for the entire parlay. Start all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot and which picks have value. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft more intelligent data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching and start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. Okay, two more to go. And then we will get out of your ears and we will jump back in tomorrow. Thanksgiving for you Americans. All right, this is an amateur fight. Is that correct, Gumby? It says an amateur fight. It is. <laughs> really? All right. Uh, three, three minute rounds, 155 pounds. Biagio Ali Walsh. There's a reason why he he kept, he has the two last names because Ali, yes, he is related to that Ali. He's his a grandson, correct? Correct. Muhammad Ali's daughter's son? That's what I believe so. Yes, correct. Look at me. Look at me. And then there's, oh, he's got three names too. Joel Galarza Lopez. Is he related to that Galarza? I don't know who that Golarze is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These two three-name guys are going to fight three three-minute rounds, 155 amateur fight, and we're going to bet on it. That's right. <laughs> Lopez, Lopez, 3-0, one knockout, two submissions. This is his PFL debut. October 22nd was his last fight. Three inches taller than Walsh, plus 500. This is like pandemic days. We're, we're uh, gambling on amateur <laughs> MMA now. Uh, Walsh or Ali Walsh, 5-1 and one with five knockouts. Imagine that he's got knockout in his hands. He's been submitted once, four and zero in PFL, five and zero overall over his last five. Three years younger than Lopez, minus seven hundred. I'm gonna pick Ali Walsh, but I will say this: for every single person out there who's like, "Oh, this is an easy extra little bit to my parlay," leave it out. Um, yeah. A because it's amateur MMA. Uh, you never know in the amateur MMA. And B, I, I would. And because uh, obviously I had to search for Joel G- Galarza Lopez, I do not know anything prior about Joel Galarza Lopez until I really uh, looked him up. A three and O amateur that PFL signed to be a sacrificial lamb. Surprisingly, I had not seen before. Um, but I went and watched it for an amateur. Really good. Like this dude might have like a future. Like uh, put it this way, we have watched and talked about guys. Um, who, who people have fought on contender series, let's say like, you know, like, okay, let's say they fought for valor fight before they got their contender series shot. And I went and watched who they fought and it's like, you know, the bouncer, um, this guy would beat some of those guys. Like he's, he's like, if you put him in one of those organizations that has just like those types of fights, he would probably already beat pros. He's got like a really nice one, two punch. His, his striking game is clearly not rounded out, but what do you want from a three and O amateur? But he's got like a really nice one-two punch that like snaps people's heads. His chin is way too high in the air, which is obviously an issue. And he's got a little bit of wrestling. Like I've seen him shoot a takedown, and it, you know, as far as what it should look like for a three and O amateur, he actually looks pretty good. With Ali Walsh, like he he is definitely way faster on the feet. He's definitely got more weapons when it comes to striking. Right? He doesn't just throw a one-two and like a soft jab and nothing else. He's got big power shots. We've seen him KO people. But also, like, we've seen him have, like, questionable wrestling and questionable jujitsu, and his chin is also not super low. I don't know if the knockout power is there for Lopez. It certainly is for Ali Walsh. But, like, it's enough for me to say, like, at negative 700, don't even put him in the parlay. It's not going to make your number that much better. But officially, yeah, I'm going to take Ali Walsh. He should have a well-rounded game because his grandpa kind of started MMA. He's, he, <laughs> sorry, you know, sorry. that... that the, the the wrestler, the Inoki versus Ali fight. So there you go. Um, all right. And we saw how that went. So he, he should he should know how to grapple, or at least um at least uh, 
block a leg kick. Um, all right, this is we go from three three minute round amateur fight to a world championship fight. Um, that's PFL for you. Tournament championship at featherweight. Gumby mentioned this earlier on. A uh, five five minute round fight. Jesus Pinedo from the Mexico versus Gabriel Alvarez Braga from the Brazil. And you're right. They would much rather Jenkins versus Wade and then these two guys. But this is what we're going to get. At least it's a pick em fight. So it should be, at least on paper, it should be a close one. Uh, we'll talk about Braga first, 12 and 0 with five knockouts, 4 and 0 on PFL. Used to fight down at Bantamweight. Two years younger than Pinedo, minus 115. That's all I got for him. Pinedo, Almudo. Have we talked about his nickname before? Can you tell us what it means? We have. Back when he knocked out somebody I didn't expect him to knock out. Was it Brandon Logman? Yeah. Um, I can't remember what Mudo meant though. Uh, the mute. So does he not talk or? Yeah, he's a quiet guy. Yeah, that makes sense. He's, he's, he speaks with his hands. Um, all right. He's 22, six and one. That would be Pinedo. 13 knockouts, four submissions. He's been knocked out twice. So he's pretty durable. That's uh, so we fight 30. He's only been stopped twice. Uh, two and one in PFL. Both of his wins have come via knockout or TKO. He has missed weight before. So keep that in mind. Multiple regional championships on his mantle. Correct. Get the shirt. Sports gambling podcast.com slash store. Actually, he missed weight last fight. Did you not? And he had a, he had a finish Jenkins, I think. Is that correct? That sounds right. But I, yes, I think that's what happened. He missed weight and, and you lose what, like a half a point or something. If you miss you lose weight. one. Uh, yeah. You lose a point. Lose a point on the score. Yeah. So, and then he ended up knocking out Jenkins. So it didn't matter. Um, one one in the UFC. He used to fight at lightweight 2013 pro MMA debut an inch height, two inches reach on Braga minus 115. Pick them. W- which side are you picking? Well, that's because, uh, do you know who Pinedo's last loss is to? Who? Braga. Um, oh, see, I forgot again. And look at you not knowing rematches. Yeah, they fought yeah. Uh, earlier in this season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was like PFL won this season. Um, Pinedo lost to Gabriel Alves Braga to kick off the season. Uh, it was a split decision, though, and like a actually real life justified split decision not like one judge went off the rails it was like clearly round one for braga clearly round two for pinedo and then round three you had to sort of ask like is the body of work for braga better than like the big shots of pinedo and and that's kind of what i think this fight comes down to is is like braga is probably going to put together a more complete 15 minutes pinedo is just to me super dangerous on the feet. I mean, we're talking about him having knocked out Brendan Lognan and Bubba Jenkins since then. Uh, two guys who have really, really good wrestling, right? Like not, not for anything, you know, we've, we've seen, we've seen Brendan Lognan use really good wrestling. It's part of why he never got a UFC contract. And we've seen Bubba Jenkins be a world-class wrestler. And he like forced them to stand with him, knocked them silly. And that to me is like a, a sign of how dangerous he is. Braga is durable. I mean, obviously he's never lost, but also I just think Pinedo, like having now had 15 minutes in the cage with Braga and and with the power I know he has, I think he corrects that wrong. I, I think he, he learns a lot from that first fight. I think you see him put his foot on the gas a little bit earlier rather than like, you know, sort of resting in the early parts of that fight. Like I think he, he was trying to find his range for all of the first round. I think he finds it easier now that he's been in there with him. And I think he knocks him out. All right, so Pinedo is the pick. Yes. All right, let's re- <laughs> let's recap. That's yes. Let's recap our picks. Then we'll get out of you. you. Get out of your ear holes and eye holes. Pinedo, Walsh, Jenkins, Caracapa, and Blyden. There are picks for the or Gumby's picks. I I will I will back all those picks as well. There are our picks for the prelims. Thank you for listening and or tuning in. We do have a YouTube channel. I always forget to promote it, but we, we are on YouTube if you want to see our faces. People seem to enjoy seeing our faces for some reason. That would be MMA Gambling Podcast on YouTube. Uh, imagine that. Um, obviously, we are also in the Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. If you want to chat in there, we're always in there. I just tipped off Jong that there is a Korean hat on this episode, so he's getting very excited. Uh, he's going to want us to drop it immediately. Um what else? Twitter, SGP and MMA, Gummy Vreeland. I'm Jeff Fox, writer on there and on Instagram. I got a Substack, moneymma.substack.com. I run a weekly UFC pick them. So none this week, but I'll be back again next week. Plus, uh, there's tons of writing and whatnot on there. So check it out. Uh, Gummy's got the Top Turtle MMA podcast, which I listened to already. Another very good episode. Tell the people who's on it this, who, 
is on it this week. Yes. So we, we talked with a couple of guys from cage warriors, Orlando Prince and Dan Doyce uh, are on the show uh, to talk about Dutch MMA and fighting this weekend. Is that how it's pronounced? Doyce? Do- Doyce. Yeah. <laughs> really? I, I, I heard it pronounced a different way, but anyhow, um, it, he sounds just like uh, Alistair Overeem. The same accent, the same way he talks. Everything is very Uberim ish. Did you did you agree with my assessment that Orlando Prince talks a little bit like Stefan Struve? <laughs> that, it didn't jump out. Uh, maybe I'll listen again. It didn't okay. jump out and, and <laughs> scream at me, Stefan Struve, but perhaps. Um, all right. So listen to that. And then obviously sportsgamblingpodcast.com is the place to go for all of everything we do in the sports gambling sphere and sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon so we can crush corporate gambling. We'll be back tomorrow because I am the relentless Jeff Fox. I'll never stop. And then Bad Man Gumby Vreeland, he'll be up by my side making picks as well. And we shall talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.